Over the weekend, news broke that the warrant and property receipt that were used to search Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence were going to be unsealed, giving access to the public to that information, which is definitely very fascinating um, and, and interesting and all that stuff. So uh, with that, we're going to talk about that in just a second, but kind of this segment is two stories smushed together. And the second part of it is, meanwhile, here's what Fox News is up to. This is what they're doing with the news that's flooding out. And that is pretty much just shamelessly spreading misinformation. Brian Kilmeade puts up this meme that was created and pretends like it's factual, or at least doesn't give any clear indi- indication that it's not factual. And Sean Hannity has to fact check him, which if Sean Hannity is fact checking you, you're in a bad place. And so uh, we're going to look at that as a great example of this is what Fox News is having to do to try to cover for Trump is just obviously and blatantly spread misinformation. So we'll talk about that um, after we go through the news that broke over the weekend. So quickly, reading from NBC, the FBI sees multiple sets of documents marked to top secret from former President Donald Trump's Florida resort home, Mar-a-Lago, when agents raided it Monday, according to a search warrant unsealed Friday. The warrant indicates that statutes relating to espionage and obstruction of justice are the foundation for the search. Convictions under these statutes can bring fines or prison sentences. One of the statutes, uh, which relates to removing or destroying government records, includes a punishment of being disqualified from holding any office under the United States. Obviously, that's interesting for obvious reasons. None of the three statutes hinge on whether the documents in question were classified. So that's very, very interesting because one of the big things that has been getting argued is this fact that the president pretty unilaterally, and this is true, has the authority to declassify documents at his will. Now, there is a debate over the formal process he would have to go through to do that. Is there some sort of process he has to go through to declassify or can he literally at any time be like, oh yeah, that's, that's declassified. Um, even if it's after he mishandled the classified documents. But what's fascinating is that doesn't really matter. You can set that aside because this is about, uh, mismanaging, mishandling, uh, possibly trying to destroy or remove, uh, for particular reasons, government documents generally, not necessarily if they're classified or not. So that's definitely very, um, very, very interesting. So continuing on, 11 sets of classified documents were among the materials seized in the raid, according to a receipt from property seized that was attached to the warrant. One group of files was marked various classified TS SCI documents. So classified SCI is that, or top secret SCI was one of the batches they found, which is the highest um, level of classification. The agents took at least 20 boxes of items, along with binders of photos, one handwritten note, and an executive grant of clemency for Roger Stone, a Republican political operative whom Trump had pardoned, according to the document. Information about the president of France was also on the list of items removed from Mar-a-Lago. So that's uh, still unclear what the information was, but that was part of it that got news. And then, of course, I'm sure you heard the reporting of there being nuclear-related information. So to me, the most fascinating thing is what within these documents um, obviously is, is relevant to us, is, is is concerning that he would have kept, would have taken from the White House. Why did he do that? And then what was he trying to do with that information? Why did he want these particular classified documents? And that's being speculated heavily. I have a very strict policy about kind of conspiracy type stuff. So I'm hearing a lot of even on the left kind of conspiracies going around about what he's planning on, what he was planning on doing with those documents. And I'm just not interested right now in speculating about that. But as more information comes out, I'll of course give it to you once it's more solid um, with more evidence to back up the claims that are being made. So what we do know is there's laws that he pretty clearly violated based on handling government documents. Um, and then the extent of the investigation is still unknown. But that's a huge story. And that's very important, um, as I'm sure you agree. But that's not at all how Fox News is treating it. They're just running cover for Trump 24-7. Um, and a great example of this is Brian Kilmeade doing this. So he's showing a photo. Uh, as you'll see, he shows a photo of the judge that signed off on the warrant uh for the FBI to raid at Donald Trump's home. And it's a photo that's doctored of the judge getting a foot rub uh, by Ghislaine Maxwell, of course, child sex tra- trafficker, close ally of uh, Jeffrey Epstein, and she helped to coordinate all of the sex trafficking that he was partaking in. Um, and it, and it's a photo, again, of her giving a foot massage to the judge that signed off on this warrant. But it's not a real photo. The face 
is just the upper body is just photoshopped onto a photo of Jeffrey Epstein, who was actually the one getting the foot up. Um, so just blatant misinformation. And you can tell me, you can watch this and tell me if Brian Kilmeade was making it obvious he was showing a meme um, or not. So we'll we'll play this for you. Bruce Reinhardt, this is the judge in charge of the of the uh, of the uh, as you know of the warrant. And we'll see if he's going to release it next. He likes Oreos and whiskey. Sean, can you relate to that? I think that's actually a picture of Jeffrey Epstein with somebody putting his head on there. I'm guessing. It, I don't know. It might be his plane. Who knows? <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you determine that in the morning. We'll be I mean, that's wild. Let's watch it one more time. First, let's take note of how hard he, ha how hard of a time he has getting through that sentence of the of the of the little glitch moment there. But we all we all get that. So all good. Uh, but then it's really fascinating how Sean Hannity just guesses. He said he's just guessing the exact correct thing. He said, ah, I think that's a photo of Jeffrey Epstein with the judge photoshopped onto it. And Brian Kilmeade's like, well, maybe it's Jeffrey Epstein's plane. Whoa, ha, ha, ha. Um, blatantly spreading misinformation on the most prominent cable news show. Uh, let's watch that clip one more time. Bruce Reinhardt, this is the judge in charge of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, as you know, of the warrant. And we'll see if he's gonna release it next. He likes Oreos and whiskey. Sean, can you relate to that? I think that's actually a picture of Jeffrey Epstein with somebody putting his head on there. I'm guessing, it, I don't know. It might be his plane, who knows? <laughs> I'll let you I'll let you determine that in the morning. We'll be right. watching. Brian, thank you. Go get Welcome it. to Hannity. Uh, we we have a lot coming Let's up tonight. Roger Stone will join us with more on these pre-dawn raids, in this case at his home. Oh, with fake news CNN cameras. How did they... So, I mean, isn't that fascinating? Brian Kilmeade going on national television, putting up what was originally posted on a meme account in the username of the, of the Twitter account. It says meme in the username because it's a meme account, doing things that are just silly, aren't necessarily true or factual. And Fox News, with all of the employees they have, all of the resources, didn't have the, uh, the, the forethought to fact check that piece of information before they put it out on national television. And Brian Kilmeade, when he gets asked by Sean Hannity, Hannity, I think, or not asked, but told, I think that probably is a photo of Jeffrey Epstein with, uh, the judge photoshopped onto it. Brian Kilmeade doesn't instantly go, Oh, you're probably right, actually. Let's make it clear for our audience that isn't an actual photo. No, instead, he responds with, no, it's Jeffrey Epstein's plane. Yeah, we, it's relating to Jeffrey Epstein with Glay Maxwell, but not clearly denouncing as misinformation. And that's dangerous because we've seen this judge get tons of violent threats, tons of death threats, um, because of the demonization on networks like Fox, Fox News of him. Um, and adding on to it a fake story about him being a pedophile that's going to cause him to have his life threatened even further. Obviously, I'm saying that because showing him with Glenn Maxwell is supposed to allude that he probably was doing bad things with underage girls. So super, super bad. And this is the tweet, not enough at all by Brian Kilmeade that he sent out once this was exposed. Last night, while subbing for Tucker Carlson, we showed you an image of Judge Bruce Reinhardt with Glay Maxwell that was sourced on screen to a meme pulled from Twitter and wasn't real. This depiction never took place, and we wanted to make clear that we were showing a meme in jest. So he pretends like this was their purpose. They were being silly. But that was not made clear at all in that segment. He wanted you to believe that was an actual photo of that judge. And so we cannot allow him to get, not that we have the authority to decide if he gets out, gets away with this, but, um, you would hope that societally we wouldn't let people get away with then going, I was kidding. I knew it was a meme, whatever. Absolutely not. You didn't. And that's why Sean Hannity felt the need to fact check you live. If it was clear you were kidding, then he wouldn't feel the need to do that. So, uh, Brian Kilmeade is purposefully contributing to the violent threats that are being uh, thrown the way of the judge, his family, and all the FBI agents, and it's very, very sad to see.